Good morning, Heathlands, and welcome to week 40 of Heathlands at Home Extended Broadcast. This week so far we've had... Nick's exercise session Monday at, uh, half, at quarter past 11. Art Live with Helen Tuck was on Monday at 1pm. This week, making origami bookmarks. On Tuesday we had... Desert Hill with Wendy at 10.30. The last of this run of live Zoom Dancing to Heal sessions will be next Tuesday, so make sure to join us at 10.30 on Tuesday the 14th on Zoom. Ethan's Quiz of the Week at 1pm and Heather won. So, well, well, well done to you, Heather. Ethan's Quiz of the Week will be moving to a Thursday afternoon in a few weeks. Aww. Aww. <laughs> I really love that quiz. We will have a few changes to the schedule coming up, but don't worry, we will keep you informed. Coming up today from Heathlands at Home. On Facebook at 11 after us, work out with Maria. Getting get, get jiggy with it. <laughs> <laughs> Live lunchtime from 12pm to 12.45pm. Spiff's themed bingo at 1 from the Purple Bubble. Today is the... Today's today's theme is the the, the famous <laughs> tweet, 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 tweet. Bird Bingo. If you want to watch the madness of Bird Bingo Live, then join Spiff, us, Benny Beanie, Sussy Susie, and the rest of the Purple Bubble at one today on Facebook. Yeah, and um, watch out for bad jokes too and tumbleweed. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, coming up right now we have a guest presenter with a craft to share with you. So far we've had videos from myself, Helen Tuck, Helen Walsh and Susan. Today we have a video from one of those people, but who can it be? Hmm. I've got another paper craft video for you today showing you how to make these lovely paper feathers and they're really simple you just need some scissors and some paper and you can create these really delicate decorations depending on the kind of paper you use will depend on the effect you get so if you use a thicker card like on this one you'll get much more stable decorations if you use a lighter weight paper they'll be much more delicate but both have their appeals so let's have a look at the materials that we're going to need. We don't need a lot in the way of the materials. We just need some bits of paper or lightweight card, a pair of scissors, a pencil and something sharp and pointy. A knitting needle is ideal. You don't want the point to be too sharp because we're going to be using it to draw on the paper, but it needs to be able to make a good indentation. So a knitting needle is ideal or if you've got a ballpoint pen that's run out of ink, so an old biro, that will work really well. Or you can just use your pencil, so don't worry if you haven't got something like this to hand. You might also find it useful to have a template. I've got some that you can use, or you can draw your own. So, let's get making. If you're using the template, the first job is to cut that out. So I've just drawn mine on a bit of scrap paper, but you can print yours out or you can use mine as a guide and draw your own. If you're drawing your own, what you might want to do is draw straight onto the back of the paper you're going to use for the feather. But I'm just going to show you how to use the templates if that's what you decide to do. So I'm just very quickly cutting out my feather shape, pop that to the side, cut out the little gaps, there we go, and we're ready for the next step. So choose the paper that you want to use, I'm going to use something nice and lightweight so you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to use this bit of green paper, and as you can see, I'm just using offcuts from other projects, so you don't need lots of big bits of fancy paper. You can just use what you've got left over for this. And using my pencil, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just draw around the outline of my templates. 
if you're finding this is a bit fiddly and it's moving around as you're working you could always put a little bit of blue tack on your template to hold it in place and before I lift it off this is a really important stage I need to get this middle section in I need to get the middle of the feather in but obviously the paper the template is between my pencil and the paper I'm using so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw along but I'm going to press really really hard as hard as you can with that pencil there we go and see I press so hard that the ends snap that's okay and down the other side so all I'm doing is I'm following the lines on the template but I'm pressing down really hard with my pencil and when I lift it off what I can see is that it's left an indentation so if I just show you that where I pressed through the template it has left an indentation it's left a mark on the paper which is what I wanted it to do so this is the bit where your pointy implement comes in so I'm using my knitting needle and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over that indented line that I made with the pencil and again I'm pressing nice and hard so that it makes a mark right the way to the top of the feather so you can see on the wrong side it's made a mark and if I turn it over you can see the mark shows through and that's really good that's what I'm after and if I just gently fold the paper along the indentation you can see that's starting to make a really nice 3D shape which is exactly what I'm after there we go so I'm going to go back to the wrong side and using my scissors I'm going to cut out the shape that we've drawn on so if you're not using a template obviously you could just just draw your feather straight onto the paper make your indented line with your knitting needle or whatever you're using and cut it out but if you are using the template just remember to go over that middle section with your pencil really hard so that you get the marks down the middle there we go so now you can see I'm getting a really nice feather shape so we can see my indented lines where it's showing up that's making the middle of the feather and I've cut out the shape but to make it even more feathery what we're going to do is we're going to cut all along these bits now this bit you need to be a bit careful for because we need to make sure there's a bit in the middle the bit where we've got the indented line that we don't cut because if we make a cut from here and a cut from here what will happen is that that section of the feather will fall off which isn't what we want so what we're going to do is just very carefully with our scissors work our way along making the cuts up to the indented line so if I draw the line on so that you can see it there we go what I've got to make sure is that this middle section you don't need to do this on yours I'm just doing this to show you this middle section we make sure that the cuts don't go into this shaded area they can go up to the shaded area but not into it so if I just do a little bit more to show you and just as I say take your time with this bit don't rush it take it nice and easy and you can see also I'm doing my cuts at an angle because I want the feather lines to follow the lines of the feather to follow that I don't want them to go straight across I'm going to cut some little lines in this little section here as well Again, making sure that I don't cut through that middle section only ever cutting up to that shaded area 
and I'm doing my cuts really quite close together so they're probably only about a millimetre or so apart but what you can do if you're not quite as confident with your scissors is you can do them much further apart and this will do two things this will give you the feathery effect that you're after you can see there but it will also be a bit less flippy floppy than if you do very fine cuts so there are advantages to doing these bigger cuts so what you could do is you could start off making bigger cuts so these are about four three or four millimeters apart about almost half a centimeter whereas the ones on the other side I've made very fine and if I just do a few more again I'm just being really careful not to cut into that middle section not to cut into that shaded section what we can see is that where we've got the bigger cuts the sh shape stays really quite firm and then where we've got the little cuts it's a bit more fluttery a bit more feathery if you like so either is fine it just depends what effect you want to go for so I'm going to go ahead and make all my cuts nice and small like this and then we'll have a look at the finished thing. So I'm just working my way along and I'm going quite quickly so that you can see the finished feather but when you do this you can take your time, go nice and slowly and see how it works out so I think what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to leave it like this so I'm going to have one side with really fine cuts and one side with thicker cuts so that you can see the difference and if I pop a darker background behind it you go purple and green my favorite combination you can hopefully see the different feathery effects so these are really nice and simple to make you can make lots of them nice and quickly and you could also decorate them further if you want to. I started adding a little bit of gold paint to this one, add a bit of shimmer. You could decorate them before you start cutting them, or you could add little bits of paint and things afterwards. But whatever you do, have fun, and don't forget to show us how you get on. As you've seen this week, we had a blast from the past with Helen Walsh showing you how to make paper feathers. What and who we will have next time then? I wonder. Mm. Hmm. Still to come this week, we have... Nick with Football Stroke Sports Fanatics Live Social Group on Thursday at 1.30. Also on Thursday we have... Dancing to Heal with Wendy, the seated version at 10.30. Followed by signing with Nick at 11am. If you remember, we changed the schedule around to make way for the new Botcher session. This week in week three of Botcher at Harrowby G3, the score was 27 to 16 with the Reds winning. Well done. This week also saw the welcome return of Jamie Cox, for those of you who have went down to the Botcher. And they are doing the Botcher League. Anyone who is interested can join us on Tuesdays from 10 until 11.45 at Harrowby G3. Ethan's Book Club with Jeanette and Susan is on Thursday too, don't forget. And on Friday we have Tai Chi with Annette at 10.30. Which now brings us to the main event of our Heathens at Home broadcast. The most popular part of the Heathens at Home broadcast. We have a new brilliant book to read to you. And today's book is, first I'm going to read you the title and then I'm going to attempt to do this with an accent. Uh, Jackie, if you're watching. Um, We're sorry. <laughs> join in if you wish. Oi, Aardvark. And I'll try to say it with an accent. Oi, Aardvark. Oi, Aardvark. Thank you, Sarah. Again, we're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, Aardvark, said the frog. Come and be in my new book. 
What new book? asked the aardvark. Yes, what new book? frowned the cat. It's called my all-new alphabet -y body book, said the frog. It's for animals I haven't told where to sit yet. I'm going to start with A for aardvark and then go all the way up to Z. Good luck with that, laughed the cat. <laughs> what will aardvark sit on? asked the dog. A. Aardvarks will sit on card sharks, said the, dog, said the frog. What's a card shark from the cat? It's a shark who's really good at playing snap, said the frog. <laughs> B next, said the dog. What's an all-new animal beginning with B? I wonder. B. Baboon, said the frog. Baboons can sit on balloons. It's not too bad. C. And crocs can sit on clocks. Hmm. Crocs can sit on clocks. D next, said the cat. Now you need to think of an all new day. Don't. Uh, go on down that road. <laughs> Don't. Nope. Dog, said the dog. D definitely begins with dog. D doesn't begin with dog. Dog begins with D. <laughs> the cat. And anyway, we've done dog before. D. We haven't done donkey, said the frog. Donkeys can sit on long keys. <laughs> Donkeys can sit on long keys. Good one. <laughs> I wonder what eels could sit on, said the cat. I don't know. Let's find out. Eels can sit on reels, said the frog. Eels can sit on reels. Elks can sit on whelks. Elks can sit on whelks. F is for finches. Finches can sit on winches. Finches can sit on winches. G is for giraffes and Gazelles? Giraffes can sit on baths. That's not, that's not too bad. And gazelles can sit on bells. Ding dong. I wonder what horses could sit on, said the dog. I don't know. Let's find out. H. Horses can sit on golf courses at <laughs> the frogs. Horses can sit on golf courses. Of course. <laughs> He's making these up. <laughs> Who's writing these? <laughs> I is for iguanas. Iguanas can sit on Piranhas. Ouch. <laughs> That's just mean. Ira not iranas. <laughs> I iguanas can sit on piranhas. J and K next, said the cat. J is for J's. J's can sit on maze, said the frog. Jays can sit on maize. It's a corn. Oh. 
Jaboas can, can sit on mowers. <laughs> Jaboas can sit on mowers. Okay, it's for Kuda. And a Kudu can sit on some doo doo. Doo doo, gasp the dog. Ick. Doo doo, drink the frog. He's definitely making this up. <laughs> <laughs> Any new L's beside the cat? That's a picture. Llamas. Llamas will sit on pajamas. <laughs> and Lynx will sit on drinks. Not on my drink. Definitely not. <laughs> not on my cocktail. <laughs> Frog's really good at writing alphabetically body books, isn't he? said the dog. Don't think he is. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> He hasn't got to Z yet, said the cat. M. Mosquitoes will sit on bur burritos. <laughs> uh. N. Nits will sit on banana splits. <laughs> uh. Nits will sit on banana splits. No. Oh. Otters will sit on swatters. And orcas will sit on piggy porkers. Look at that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> wow. Wow. Frog's brilliant at this, said the dog. No. Wait till you hear my new peas, boasted the frog. P. Possums will sit on blossoms. Not too bad. Pigeons will sit on widgeons. And pangolins will sit on mandolins. It's a type of instrument. I don't know. <laughs> and pandas will sit on the verandas. Lift the flaps. Spiff. <laughs> don't. <laughs> no spiff. No. Bad boy. Q. Quitzels will sit on pretzels. <laughs> Quolls will sit on holes. Well, how can you sit in the hole? You're in the hole. <laughs> Raccoons will sit on macaroons. Ooh, other one. <laughs> a squid can sit on a lid. Is that it? A lid. <laughs> Turtles can sit on spurtles. Ticks can sit on wicks. Euacris, is that right? You, um, you, you say that, I don't know how to say it. Euacris can sit on saris. It's a type of blanket. Vipers will sit on wipers and wombats will sit on combats. Good luck with X, purred the cat. <laughs> okay, now this is just cheating. X-ray tetra will sit on seabeds, seaweed, seashells, Coral, shipwrecks, etc. <laughs> Clap the frog. X-ray tetra, etc. 
that that that's cheating. Yeah, definitely. Yaks will sit on sacks. Don't don't rattle them. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> And just to prove I can even think of a Z, zebras will now sit on candelabras, <laughs> a new type of black and white stripy candelabra that I've just invented. <laughs> Ta-da! My all new alphabet body book finished, grinned the frog. Don't forget Zilly Zink Zinkers, said the dog. Zilly Zink Zinkers sit on frilly pink knickers. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. Don't be ridiculous, said the frog. There's no such thing as Zilly Zink Zinkers. Yes, don't be absurd, said the cat. Then what are they? asked the dog. I don't know anymore. <laughs> As you can see, they they are. Hold on. Really... Zilly zing zinkers singing or sitting on frilly pink knickers. <sighs> you don't own any of them, do you? Any anyone? Oh. No, oh, okay. Don't, don't need to ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Must be Susie, No, she won't. <laughs> well, 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 they, well, there you have it. You can now make up the alphabet any way you want. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> we are back again the same time next week with another awesome book to read you. Have a great rest of your week. Stay safe and stay happy and... See you, see you all again soon. Bye. Bye, -bye.